Marcellus Wiley, um, who obviously spent time with the uh, the Buffalo Bills himself, long time in the NFL, long time sports media. How are you, my friend? Happy New Year. Man, happy New Year, brother. It feels like life interrupted. I haven't talked to you in so long. I blame the pandemic, but it's been too long, brother. There's always plenty of people to blame, right? I, I, I so, uh, so that we're we're easy on that one. But yeah, man, it is good to talk to you. It is good to hear your voice, and and you were one of the people I thought of right away when I'm watching something, and maybe it's just the uniform and whatnot. But what what is your takeaway? on what happened uh, over the last 48 hours with the Bills franchise, the NFL community, and what the league can and should do next. Yeah, you're talking about a loaf of bread. Which life do we talk about first? So much happened in the last few days. Uh, I just talk about first the emotional impact to have that visual, to watch him on the floor, on the turf, lying there, lifeless, and Talk about football and how violent that game is. As much as you know you put yourself at risk every single day, every single way, and every single play, you never imagine that. And it's a conversation that's crazy enough that we have in our household a lot. My son is seven years old. He loves football even more than I did, and he just swears by it. And he always asks randomly, has anyone ever died playing football? And the only thing I ever come up with is a couple of heat exhaustion stories, and that's it. I said, but no, no one's ever played the game of football in live action and died. And that almost came to reality watching that. And I was just sitting there very emotional, crying with my son, trying to keep a poker face because I want him to still have his own hopes and dreams and not them to be undermined by what he was watching. But Watching that experience, man, it's just your mortality comes to light, you know, and it becomes reality. Uh, I'm glad the NFL finally came to its senses and had to suspend action. But be real, I think there's too much backlash for the NFL going through that process. That was a decision that had to be made, and people are employed, no matter how emotionally pulled they are in the moment, that they still have to make a business decision. I think we need to be adults about that. Um, without closure in this moment, the NFL made the right decision. But if they had had closure, imagine Tua's concussion and him falling down. And, and when we had a sense of closure, we had a sense that we could wrap our arms and our brains around what was going on, we moved on and played that game. If that would have occurred on Monday night, they would have continued to play. But because they didn't have that, because this was truly life and death, they had to suspend action. And it's good that they made the decision that they finally did, Marcellus. And I don't think that they deserve criticism for taking the time because of what you said, the multi-billion dollar business angle of it. And so as we all wait for DeMar Hamlin to get better and we pray for him, we do have to confront the reality of the future, which is what does the NFL do with this Bills-Bengals game? What do you think the best procedure is going forward to resume or just forget this game? Yeah, uh, they've extended the, the season before I've read and the thought about doing it with the pandemic as well. It's in the cards, basically, to manipulate the season and try and make it happen. Or you can just go win percentage. Like, hey, you got one fewer game than everyone else, but let's even it all out by win percentage and play it that way. Um, it's, it's a true dilemma. Like, you got two bad decisions to make because if you alter the schedule – it's not going to be fair to all. And then to put these guys back out there, my son once again asked me, he had some great questions. He said, Dad, <laughs> do you start the game off where they ended it or you start off 0-0? Zero, zero? I was like, brother, you need to work for the NFL. I have none of these <laughs> answers. But uh, I don't know what they do with it because it's going to be an impossible situation. There's going to be backlash, and it's never a perfect outcome. But if I were commissioner – I would want them to play that game out just because of the war of attrition, especially at this time of year. A team that was allowed to advance without one extra opportunity to go out there and take those hits, hey, man, I think that team has an advantage. So if I'm the commissioner, I've got to extend the season. I've got to give them one more chance. Marcellus Wiley is here with us on Willard and Dibbs 95-7 The Game, and I think what we've learned so far is that your son should be conducting this interview. <laughs> 
athlete. He's a little genius in there, and he can ball. Yeah. He has something going. I have no doubt. I, what what year will he be drafted? You said that he's seven, so what do we got? Uh, this is 11 years from now, maybe 2034. We're looking at the NFL draft for your son? Uh, let's, let's put him at 21. You know, his NIL deal is on the way already. Ah, of course. <laughs> of course. I, 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 with you, I have no doubt. Yeah. Uh, more to it is the uh, podcast – uh, with Marcellus Wiley, who's joining us here at 95.7 The Game. Okay, Marcellus, here's something that, that, that we've been talking about, but I'm really just guessing because I've never been an NFL player. There's so much that goes into getting yourselves to this point where you could be the one seed in the playoffs. But obviously the emotions are there. Let's hope things continue to go well for DeMar Hamlin. But if you were on the Bills right now, what would you want to do? I would want to play. Um I bring up a story that is not to be dramatic, but it really gives me strength and encouragement in these moments. I mean, if you play football, you know the culture. It's next man up. And if you guys remember in live time, there were players over there after their emotion uh, was subsided starting to warm up again, starting to get ready to go play again. Um, I would have wanted to play. I have this ability to compartmentalize, which means – Something can be heavy on my heart, but I still can go out there and play the game I need to play. I bring up the example. My mother passed away when I was in Dallas uh, after that season, and I thought the world was going to end. I thought the sun wouldn't come up the next day. And what starts to happen in real time is that other people, as much as they feel for you, as empathetic as they are for you, they look at situations differently and with different perspectives. So people were cracking jokes the next day. People had other conversations outside of my mother passing. And I only bring that up is because no matter what you go through, there's other lanes of activity that you must participate in. I found myself at the florist, the mortuary, talking to doctors. I was like, I just want to sit here and just be in this emotional pool. And that's not how life works. So if I'm a player on that team who's been through anything, I got to just respond and compartmentalize. If the NFL does get this game in and maybe they push the playoffs back, Mark and I talked about this in terms of the Niners maybe getting the one seed and having two, if not three weeks off. What do you think about the idea of rest versus rust? If the playoffs get pushed back a week, whatever team gets the number one seed, if this game gets pushed into week 19, would have an extra week. Is that a disadvantage for a team to have two or three weeks off? Yeah, it certainly is. You brought up a great point. Uh, a lot of people always go with the cliche, rest versus rust, forgetting that they're not opponents. They're on the same team. It's rest and rust. Uh, let me tell you how. If you are a team that gets to get the week off, you know what happens? You get to rest. And you're like, yeah, my body's feeling better. But you're going to come back rusty. <laughs> it's just the same thing. And if you're a team that plays all the way through, then you obviously get to keep that momentum and rhythm and flow. So if you rest, you're going to come back rusty. Now, a lot of times we look at the results and say, oh, they didn't look rusty. But you don't know the emotional state. You don't know the psychological place that it comes to when you're a player and you go back out there and you skip the beat. Uh, when you skip a beat, you're so conscious of, okay, everything's good, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And coaches always say this. It takes forever to get into shape, and it takes no time to get out of it. And that's the funniest thing (laughs) about playing sports. That's why everyone gets into a zone. You're mindless. That's why you want uncle momentum on your side. That's why you need rhythm. Because as soon as you skip a beat, you skip a step, it feels like you got to return back at least a step. Uh, Marcellus, I'm looking at your uh, your playoff resume. I'm seeing three games. Is that right? You playing three playoff games? You're gonna see three games and three donuts, brother. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my question: because Man. obviously in in this market, all the talk over the last five weeks has been about this phenom Brock Purdy, Mister Irrelevant becomes relevant. And he, he's checked sort of every box. He's beaten good teams. He's beaten bad teams. He's done it at home. He's done it on the road. This game against the Raiders over the weekend, he was able to do it from behind. So he's ticked every box. So now that leaves us with this. Can he do it in the playoffs? Your experience, how different is a playoff game versus a regular season game? 
Yeah, man. Um, I wish I won a playoff game, but I have bad teammates, so I never was able to. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine. You imagine. Uh, but in all seriousness, two things happen Im- immediately when you play in the playoffs. The intensity from everyone around you, including yourself, you're participating in it as well, higher intensity, but also the pressure you put on yourself because of the grave consequences. So let's talk about the intensity. You'll be able to match that intensity. Like, you know, we're primal in a lot of ways. So if you see somebody out there going six gears, you got to go six gears, fight or flight. So you're going to respond to that. Here's the tricky part. And no one has the answer to the test until you take the test. How do you deal with great consequences under pressure? When it's a regular season game, no matter what happens, I mean, the worst game you've ever had, there's another one. And that is the mattress you're able to lie on in your psyche that allows you to respond. But some guys can't respond when they know they don't have another chance. And I don't know him in this situation to even speculate. But I will tell you this. Those who have more experience realize that the grave consequence you fear, you actually get another year. You actually get another chance maybe to be in those same circumstances. So if he puts too much pressure on himself, basically, he's going to go out there and he's going to be scrambled eggs. But if he goes out there and is keeping his composure and realizes this is still just a game. To do it big, you got to do all the little things He'll be just fine. You mentioned scrambled eggs, and uh, you mentioned donuts before. I'm thinking about breakfast, but yep, uh, on the donuts, <laughs> let's talk about your uh, L.A. Clippers and the donuts in their championship column. Oh. What do you make of their chances this year, Marcellus? And wow. is Kawhi Leonard ever going to become Kawhi Leonard again? Oh, my God. Talking about a hot take and coming in hot. Like, okay. We're going to do this. Right? We're going to do Came it, Marcellus. Came off the top rope. I'm like, we're sitting here talking football. Oh, and they no. just, wow. You and Mark can be buddies, but somebody's got to be adversarial now, Marcellus. <laughs> you know that. It's radio. No, it's not only that, man. It's sports, man. We, we, we play against an opponent. I get it. Look, I'm <laughs> going to always start off and end off with Clip City, Chip City. Now, the problem is every year I say that, and every year I'm wrong, so I continue to say that until finally it's Clip City, Chip City 2023. (laughs) In in seriousness, if Kawhi plays, obviously with everyone else healthy on this roster, uh, their championship contenders probably coming out the West facing maybe Brooklyn. If Kawhi and this marathon, he's trying to jog and make sure he has enough in the kick at the end for him to win, and our team to win, if that actually comes to life, you got to fear the Clippers. But the problem is right now, two things. One, our lineup and trying to figure out who else is going to support him and Paul George and his injury, that's an issue right now. But the greater issue is when you know you got that nitrous button in the car, you know, fast and furious style, do you put the pedal to the metal? Do you, do you really mash out when you know you still got some nitrous, which is Kawhi Leonard in the playoffs? And I think that's what's affecting this team as well. The injuries, the lineup rotation, and the fact that you know you got something that's going to separate you from the pack. See, I, I just never come down the road of Clipper fans because I figure when all is said and done, we're going to be sitting around a table with poker chips and beers just hating the Lakers together. So I figure you're, we're, all, we're all in the same gang, Marcellus, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, sir, man. You already know the fakers get no love in our life. No, there you go. no love yeah. anywhere. We're just full of envy. That's all it is. Uh, Marcellus, thank you, man. Thank you for doing it. Great to hear from you. Continued success. I oh, appreciate you so much, man. It's great to hear that old groggly voice still up. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I still sound 72 years old, but I'm still not there yet. Oh, man, love, brother. Keep it going, guys. All right, thank you, Marcellus.